unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth, and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Praise God. Hallelujah. I promise to teach us about how to receive. How to receive. Hallelujah. Some people do not know how to receive. They do not know how to receive. They don't know how to walk in whatever God has given them. Somebody shout hallelujah. I have examined my life and I have seen that for many years, there were certain things that had failed to happen, to manifest in my life, even though I knew that they were mine because I did not know how to receive. I did not know how to receive. And so... Because some do not know how to receive, some, you know, shatter all manner of prayer and deeper places of worship and intercession. And they say, if I pray a lot, you know, I will get these answers. And, but they don't have answers. You know, some of them say, no, let me fast a lot. Which is all good, by the way. I'm a man of prayer and fasting. But somebody says, Apostle, I have prayed for a child for 16 years, 15 years. Now, you might not understand this until you have prayed for something for 5, 10 years, 16. It's a hard life. It's a very painful thing to pray for something year in, year out, and you get to a place of frustration and questioning God. Some actually give up on God or some actually stop praying because they don't know what to do anymore. They've done everything they know in the book to do, and some of them actually come and tell you. Some are not even laxed. No, they are actually very consistent people in the things of God from where they understand things. And somebody says, you know, I have done everything that I know to be done, but I have failed to get results. Maybe you don't know how to receive. And today I feel impressed by God that I'm going to give us answers. Very simple things, very simple steps in how to receive, but they are going to give you very immense results, very powerful results in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Why are we having the conversation of uh, receiving? John, the third chapter, the 27th verse. The Bible says, a man can receive nothing except it be given to him from heaven. A man can receive nothing except it be given to him from heaven. What does that mean? There is a place of being given from heaven and there is a place of receiving from heaven. Those two things are different. You see? The Christian walk is a life that not only should understand what has been given by God, but should also understand how to receive of what has been given. Because again, we would not be teaching about receiving if we are not affirming that there are things that are given to us. We have read the scriptures that you have been given everything that pertains to life and godliness. Can you say that your life is a result of the manifested things of God pertaining to life and godliness? Do you bear witness of that portion of scripture? Yes, you have been given everything that pertains to life and godliness, but does your life show that? Perhaps he has given you everything, everything that pertains to life and godliness. So you need nothing from him. Everything that pertains to life and godliness. Everything you will ever need in this life is already given. Everything. And everything you'll ever need to live a godly life has been given. But the question is, do you see that manifested in your life? Bible says he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Do you walk in that blessing? Do you see the manifestation of that blessing? If you've not seen the fullness of that manifestation, you're the one I came to talk to. Somebody shout hallelujah. I have told people that there's always a difference between what is given and what is received. And I gave us an example where he says, 
that if sin and death came by one man, one person, the fall of Adam, see, and he says, how much more they which receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in this one life by that Jesus Christ. You see, now I want us to follow this very clearly, brethren, that when you're talking about grace, grace has been given to all that believe. The gift of righteousness has been given to all that believe. But I thank the emphasis that is given in Romans 5.17, how much more they that receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign, some versions use, shall rule in life by one Jesus Christ. In other words, God has called the Christian to be above and not beneath. He has called you to be the head and not the tail. He has called us to even live above kings. Somebody shout hallelujah. And the most celebrated princes of the world. He said you shall be above. He says the Lord shall make the, the head and not the tail. Deuteronomy 28. He says and thou shall be above only, only, only. Underline that. He said you shall be above only and thou shall not be beneath. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. You shall be above only, only. You'll be the head only. God does not have any plans of middle or down. -uh. He did not have any issues with you being above. No, his plans for you are to be and stay above only. Somebody shout hallelujah. And so I decree as you listen to this word tonight, you will be and are above in your industry. You are above and not beneath in your craft. You are above and not beneath in your education. You are above and not beneath in your career. You are above and not beneath in your nation. You are above and not beneath in your continent. You are above and not beneath in your, in your study. You are above and not beneath in it. whatever God has placed in your life. God says that you are entering a place of being above. He's going to set you so above that your name will be mentioned in any nation they'll mention. And they'll say, I know that woman. I know that man. Oh, no. I see people visiting the hardest or deepest nations of the world. And when they reach there, people will ask about you. People will ask them, do you know so and so? Do you know Apostle Grace from Uganda? Put your name. Somebody shout hallelujah, glory to God. Shout I'm above and not beneath. I'm above and not beneath. Above only. Upward only. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout amen. This is the plan of God. That's the way of God. That's his understanding concerning your life. So, like I said, but we don't know how to receive. We don't know how to walk in what God has already ordained for us to walk into. Now, we have been given. We have been given. Now, I'm going to give you five things. Usually, I love giving a few numbers huh? that some of you will help keep some of these things in your heart and your mind. I'm going to give you five things. And you realize many of the things that we emphasize or can't emphasize concerning receiving from God will always go around these five things to help you walk in the things God has created for you. Number one, understand everything you are being taught or are studying. Understand everything that you are being taught or are studying in the word of God. There are many, many believers that I know go to church every day or even attend church online. They're very consistent in coming in the presence of God and studying the things of God, but not many actually have weighed themselves against understanding. To say, if they have taught this, have I really understood this? When God is speaking about the Berean spirit, I call it the Berean spirit. Why Paul celebrates the work and life of these men of Berea. The Bible says, and these were more fairer than those which were in Thessalonica. Why? Because 
these people did not only listen to the word as it was given. The Bible says they received the word. You see? They didn't just listen to the word. They received the word. Did you hear the word there? They received the word with all readiness of mind. Attend to the word of God with all readiness of mind. When you are studying the word of God, that should be the place where you focus your entire energies and attention more than anything you could ever study or attend to. Some people attend to physical conversations with men more than they attend to the word of God. Some people attend to child play and things that concern life more than they do attend to the word of God. I tell people, when you are consuming the word, consume everything. Everything. Take away from you anything that should or will distract you. Because the reason why many people are losing a lot when God is speaking to them or will not fully understand what God is giving them is that many of them are diverted and Satan is smart enough to know that I can actually interfere your place of fellowship with God or hearing of the word and just take out one thing, one jot in everything spoken and that will change your entire thinking concerning that whole message. The Amplified says a little, a slight inclination to error, very, 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 very slight. Or a few false teachers, the Bible says, leavens the whole lamp and it perverts the whole conception of faith or misleads the whole church. Satan doesn't need to do too much to take you away from the course. Satan doesn't need to do too much to take you away from what God wants you to receive. Just does very little, very little. And some people don't know that that little thing you miss that little thing you miss could be the difference between life and death. Do you know that man fell, Adam and Eve fell, because Satan changed one statement. And all humanity died because of one statement changed. One statement People are living in sin and dying. Children are dying. People are dying across the world of disease and sickness. Human life as we know it has changed from the projection and trajectory God had for them. Because one man listened wrongly to what God was saying. Do you know how many marriages are on the rocks now because people did not hear a certain thing or misheard the thing that was spoken to them? Do you know how many businesses are crashed now to zero because you did not hear fully? Do you know how many careers now are sunken because you did not hear clearly? Do you know how many ministries are struggling and paying prices of 30, 20 years? They are stuck, 60 years, and they're going to leave and die some without fulfilling what God has ordained for them because they did not pick that one thing that was important or did not understand what God was telling them so. Those which are of the Berean spirit, the Bible says, were fairer than those which were of Thessalonica because they received the word with all readiness of mind and they searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. What were they really searching for? They were searching for understanding. They were searching to understand. Somebody shout hallelujah. They were searching to understand. Are you somebody who attends to the word of God more keenly and aggressively? Or do you just go to church and they read the word? Some of you, you're 10, 5, 6 years in the gospel. You don't even have a notebook. You don't even have a Bible. You don't even study the word. And then you say, oh, why are things not working? Apostle, pray for me. This seems to be a spirit in my family. Every time we get to this age, these things happen. Yes, they could happen. They may happen because of what is happening in your family. But they're not happening because of what is happening in your family. They are happening because you have failed to understand what God has availed to counterattack what you are fighting with. Somebody shout hallelujah. But also more on this emphasis. If you don't get to the place of understanding, you will never understand the portals of receiving. In the realm of receiving, there are portals. 
is not one portal. But when everybody or anybody can access that one portal, we're all going to receive from that one portal. We all have different portals of receiving. We all have different dimensions of receiving. We all have different realms from which we receive. The realms of the spirit are clear. They are not equal and they are not the same. But only a man which has gotten to the place of understanding the word can differentiate the portals, the realms, the dimensions. In Matthew, when he's talking about that which has understood, Matthew 13, the 23rd verse, he says, but he that receiveth the seed, listen, into the good ground, he's talking about the facets of hearing, is he that heareth the word, listen, and understandeth it. You, you hear what I said? They hear the word, they receive the word and understand it, the Bible says, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth, first portal, Psalm 100-fold, second portal, Psalm 60-fold, third portal, Psalm 30-fold. Some receive in the portal of the 30-fold. Some receive in the portal of the 60-fold. Some receive in the portal of the 100-fold. You see? They're all receiving. And yet there are people who don't receive any. <laughs> so those are not even in the place of understanding. But I said that if you get to a place of understanding the word, understanding the word, now we get to a place of bearing fruit. And God says that your fruit is in three dimensions. You either are dealing with a 30-fold kind of fruit or a 60-fold kind of fruit or a 100-fold kind of fruit. That helps you understand that not only do I now learn to receive from God, but how much I'm able to take from God is perfect. You see? I'll give you a clue. The acceptable, the good, and perfect will concerning your life. You see, when he's telling us not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, that we might prove that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. Good, acceptable, perfect. Those three, they define so much on how the fold comes. Somebody shout hallelujah. The second thing, as you are studying the word, the other one thing you need to emphasize on is acquaint yourself with God's promises. If you want to learn how to receive, because you're given, we've already confirmed you've been given, but how to receive all that God has given you in this life and the next. He says, acquaint yourselves with the promises of God. I tell people, if you have met three years in the face, three years in the face, three, one to three years, you should be at least able to quote certain scriptures off your head. You see that? It's something I did many years ago. I did a very interesting <laughs> write-up for myself that I kept updating as I studied the Word. And I took time to understand all the promises of God in scripture. I've done this for a very long time. And then I wrote somewhere and I classified these promises. And I went to the aspects, you see, I've already talked about the three chord curse. If you're talking about the curse of humanity, or the three things in which people are tested, and these are the three. If somebody will study his life or the life of all men in the world that they are tested, these are usually the three things that men are tested. One, health. The second one is our finances. And the third is our relationships. If you look at everything that you have been attacked or tested into, you will realize it's usually either around your health or your finances or in your life of relationship. Whether relationship with God, whether relationship with your family, whether relationship with your friends and neighbor, your children, your husband, your wife, your leaders, or whatever it is. It's either sickness or financial or relation. Those are the three. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, behold, I pray above all that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. See? Above all. 
that you may prosper financial and be in health in your body even as your soul prospers relationship those are three things that test us now i got all that touch those three and i went and wrote every promise concerning health i have it and then i went and wrote every promise concerning my finances i have them and then i wrote um all the promises concerning relationships, the emotional part of my life, my soul, because the soul is the seat of emotions. Relationship, concerning my relationship with God, my relationship with my wife and children, my relationship with my spiritual children, my relationship with everybody, all of these promises, I have them written. You see, and I have acquainted myself with them even in my life of prayer, these are things that I constantly confess and speak on my life. Why is it important for you to acquaint yourself with the promises of God? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, the 18th verse, it says, but as God is true, this is now Paul speaking, as God is true, our word toward you was not yea and nay. We didn't say, oh, in this one, it is no. In this one, it is yes. No. He says, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. For all, listen, the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, and to the glory of God by us. This is what he's saying. That if you know how to appropriate your promises, you'll always have a yea. If you know how to appropriate the promises that I've given you, I cannot say no against what I have promised. He sealed every promise by an oath, and he sought to swear by one great and there was none, and so he swore by his name. And he says that defines the immutability of his counsel. It has become the anchor of our souls. It holds us when winds are blowing us and things are testing us. Why? Because God cannot lie. That is the stronghold of our consolation. God swore. He made an oath. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That is a promise. So how do you live the life of salvation and receive all that God has given you when you do not even know the promises of God? One man sang, I'm standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of Christ. My Savior, I'm standing, I am standing, I am standing on the promises of God. You must learn to stand on what God has promised. He says, because the Jesus we preached, there are people who preach another Jesus. Somebody say that, you know, when you ask God, he has three answers. He can say yes, he can say no, and he can say not yet. And you ask them, get that for me in scripture. Show me the scripture. The Jesus Paul preached, the Jesus Silvanus preached, the Jesus Timotheus preached was a Jesus of promise. If you will read the message version, if you read from the 18th verse again, he says, I try to be as true to my word as God is to his. A word to you, listen to what the message version says, wasn't a careless yes cancelled by an indifferent no. It wasn't a careless yes cancelled by an indifferent no. When he says that is a yes, that is yes. If he says, I will bless you, how can God say, yes, I have said that I will bless you, but in your case, no. Where did you get that from? Who taught that? They're teaching another Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. They're teaching another Jesus. They're teaching another Jesus. The one we preach and teach, the Bible says, there was no name. Now, let's continue with the message. He says, in the 19th verse, 
when Silas and Timothy, and I proclaimed, he says, the son of God among you, he says, did you pick up on any yes and no? On again, off again, waffling? Did you pick that when we're teaching about that? Did you hear them when they were preaching, when Paul was preaching? Did you hear a nay, yes, no, no? He says, wasn't it a clean, strong yes? Verses 20, he says, he says, whatever God has promised, get stamped with the yes of Jesus. In him, this is what we preach and pray, the greater man, God's yes, and our yes together, gloriously evident. We also saw the results of that yes. And the next verse says, if I'll take you a bit deeper, it says, God affirms us, making us a sure thing in Christ, putting his yes within us. How? Verses 22. By his spirit, with his eternal pledge, a sure beginning of what he is destined to complete. A sure beginning of what he's destined to complete. A sure beginning of what he's destined to complete. The person of the Holy Spirit is the seal and guarantee of the things that were freely given unto us by Christ. How do you know that God says yes to you? You have the Holy Ghost! Why do you have the Holy Spirit? Why are you given the Holy Spirit to be denied and ashamed together? Uh-uh. That's not the way of God. That's not the teaching of God. That's the teaching of men. Somebody shout, hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So acquaint yourself with the purposes of God. Write them down. Put them in a little book on your phone. Put a note where you have them. And in your life of prayer, speak these promises on your life. You'll be amazed at how much you're going to start receiving. Because every time you say a promise, it's yeah and amen. Every time you proclaim a promise of God over your life, it's yeah and amen. How do you miss that? He has promised us here. Isn't the word of God so beautiful? The third, I believe. Understand the end of the Lord if you need to receive or to walk in whatever God has given you. Understand the end of the Lord. Why do I emphasize this? There's a difference between your end and God's end. There's a difference between your perspective about your end and God's perspective about your end. And the scriptures have been clear. A man called Job was tested so heavily. He lost his children. He lost his animals. He was diseased in his body. And when James is speaking about him in the fifth chapter, the 11th verse, he says, Behold, we count them happy which endure, for ye have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Now understand this, understand this, understand this. It's going to be so beautiful for you to get it. God is merciful, full of pity. Yeah. And tender mercy. This is God. He is a merciful God. And he, he tender mercies. And he's a God of pity. That's who he is. Job enters a test. He's sick. He loses all his children. He loses all his wealth. He goes through all the tests of life. But in all of these tests, God was still merciful. God was still pitiful. God was still faithful. God was still all-powerful. The Bible says in Acts 15, the 18th verse, known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. Nothing you're going through is shocking God. And God is not reacting to what you're going through. Yeah? Some people think that now God is reacting to what they're going through. Or that God is surprised by what is trying them. No, God is not shocked by what is happening. There's nothing happening to you that has shocked God. He knows the end from the beginning. And in that knowledge, God has said, whether you're in the middle of it, whether you're at the beginning of this journey, I am a God. My end is of mercy. My end is of pity. My end is of restoration. My end is of healing. My end is for breakthrough. My end is for your deliverance. That's my end. Understand my end. You know why? Because when you don't understand the end of the Lord, you could end yourself. There are people who have actually given up on life already. They've given up on, you know, maybe it's not God's will for me to have this. I think 
It was meant for some people else. It wasn't mine, you know. I believed God for marriage. I've prayed, I've fasted. I've grown old. I've even gone past age, childbearing age. I think God didn't create me to be married. Listen, if he did not create you that way, you would not have the feeling of getting married. He says, let him that is espoused to one not pray that he be not espoused, and let he which is not espoused pray that he be espoused. You see, God has made us this way. If you were meant to get married, he will give you the feelings of a person to get married. And if you were not meant to get married, he will not give you the feelings, the passions, and the character, the way of life, and the grace for marriage. If somebody says, you know what? I was not called to get married. That's all right. They've said it. They don't feel it. They don't see it. They don't have the grace for it. They don't have the character and mind for it. That doesn't make them less. In fact, it makes them better ministers, like Paul says. But you have every feeling that a woman who is married has or should feel. Your body is telling you you should be married. Your mind is telling you you should be married. Everything around you, circumstantial evidence, the guiding lights of the spirit are telling you you should be married, but you're not yet married. And then somebody ends it and they say, you know, I think it wasn't God's will for me to get married. Listen, it's like God giving a woman breasts and a womb. And then she assumes that she's never going to give birth in this life or that it wasn't the will of God for her to conceive. Are you hearing me? Why did he put you in that job in the first place if you knew you could not manage? Why did you call you in this ministry if he knew that you did not have the grace for it? I don't care how weak you are. I don't care how many mistakes. He saw all the mistakes you could make. He saw all your foolishness and your silly attitude and he still anointed and appointed you. Respect the mind of God concerning your destiny and open your eyes to the end of the Lord. When you start to see the end of the Lord, listen, your prayer life will have hope. Your hope will be lively. I just can't give up now. Come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the way would be easy and I He's brought me this far to leave me. I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. <laughs> Every time I open my eyes to see the end of the Lord, I say, but God, I could have died in my mother's womb, but I passed on that one also. Are you hearing me? Corona could have taken me, but also that one, I passed over it. Are you hearing me? God has not preserved you this far to leave you. Look at the end of the Lord. If you want to learn to receive everything you're praying for, look to the end. And when you see the mind of God concerning its end, leave from there and come back and deal with it. You will start to see yourself automatically receiving. Somebody shout hallelujah. You'll start to see yourself automatically receiving, walking in the power to receive. Because every time you say, oh, Father, I know that this is happening right now. But I see the end of this. Oh, glory. I see the end of this. And I live in the end of it. That's a man receiving. That's a man receiving. Shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Shout hallelujah. Very simple things, but very powerful. The fourth. The fourth. A bit related to the third. Choose to go the whole way in your faith. Let me say it again. Choose to go the whole way in your faith. When you choose to believe, go the whole way. Go the whole way. Go the whole way. I want to read us a story in Hebrews. Paul is speaking to the Hebrews in the 10th chapter. And you will read the Amplified Version. Begin from the 32nd verse. He says, Be ever mindful of the days gone by in which, after you were first spiritually enlightened, you endured a great and painful struggle. 
sometimes the Bible says, being yourselves a gazing stock, you are publicly exposed to insults and abuse and distress, and sometimes claiming fellowship and making common cause with others that were so treated. For you did sympathize and suffer along with those who were imprisoned, and you bore cheerfully the plundering of your belongings and confiscation of your property in the knowledge and consciousness that you yourselves had a better and lasting position. Now, this is what he's saying. These guys went through a lot. Because of Christianity, they were plundered. Because of Christianity, their properties were confiscated. Because of Christianity, they were made a gazing stock. Because of Christianity, they were abused. They were exposed to insults. Because of Christianity, they were counted as the least and the worst people of society. They were the scum of the earth at that point. So there was a huge testation and a huge persecution of the church then. But the Bible says because they had already been enlightened, hmm, hmm, you know, there are Christians right now which are asleep. So when the Bible says, awake ye, O sleeper, that Christ might shine in thee. Some people are Christians, but they are asleep. And some are Christians, but they are awake. They're enlightened. Even in the world, there are people who are asleep in the world, spiritually, and there are people which are enlightened. Although they are enlightened from the world of the dark. That's why you hear guys who call themselves illuminated or guys who are enlightened to higher consciousnesses and stuff like that and why they do all these demonic things, that they will be raised above the normal human consciousness so they will see things normal people don't see. Well, that's the devil trying to copy. But there's a reality in the gospel of how a man can be awakened or enlightened. But you see, they're enlightened. These guys are awakened. And because of that, their eyes can see the lasting position they have. Their consciences are not shaken because of what was happening at that hour. And verses 35, he says, do not therefore, listen, he's telling these guys, now God is telling you, if you want to receive, if you want to receive, he says, do not therefore fling away your fearless confidence. Oh, say fearless confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the third point was to see, behold the end of the Lord and, you know, hold it in there and, you know, keep it on as you see what God will do in the end. But you see, this first point really more than just knowing the end he says in this journey choose to fight it out in this journey choose to go the whole way with fearless confidence he says for it carries a great and glorious compensation of reward he says do not fling away do not throw it away do not abandon your fearless confidence that means as you walk in this journey don't walk this journey somber don't walk this journey sad. Don't walk this journey frustrated. Don't walk this journey stressed and pale. The Christians you find, and if you bypass them, they even smell warfare. They smell like warfare. Even the way they walk. They walk like they have prayed for so many years. Hi. Hi. Oh, hi. Hi. They can't even answer you fine. No, 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 no. Because they smell the suit of war. They smell blood. Are you hearing me? God says when you're going through this, go with a confident life. Go with a confident spirit. Go with a fearless confidence. What does he mean? Even if you don't have money in the pocket, walk like the richest man. Are you hearing me? Even if things are not working the way they should. Are you hearing me? Don't lose the pride and confidence that you have in what God can do. He says for ways are busting, serving faith. He says these things have a great and glorious compensation of reward. Walk fearless. Yeah, my husband is sick, but all is well. My wife is not feeling well. Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> it's cool. It's cool. It's, it's cool, really. Oh, they fired you from the job by heart. You've been out of job for like 20 or 15 years. Oh, I imagine what you're going through, you poor thing. And then this Christian says, hmm, what can I tell you, Agatha? What can I tell you, Agatha? I don't have rent, I don't have this, I don't have that, and I don't have that. Oh, do you know what you've done to yourself? Do you know what you have done to yourself? You have frustrated every portal to receive what God has put for you. But imagine that other Christian with fearless confidence. They tell, oh darling, I've heard that you've been out of job for 15 years. Oh yeah, yeah, out of job for 15 years. But girl, God has provided. God has been so sufficient for me in spite of what you're going through your house. Now when you start speaking that way, you're bursting over God. Are you hearing me? Your faith is saying that I'm not looking at the present circumstances to determine what I live on who I am. No. 
and looking at who God is and what he has done in Christ Jesus and whether I slept hungry a few times are you hearing me whether I didn't have you know enough clothes a few times whether I put on what I didn't want to put on a few times whether I was frustrated and I failed to go certain places a few times that does not matter one ounce I look at all of those things that worked, all of those positive things that worked in my journey, I collect them in this one journal of my heart and I get a fearless confidence. And God says, if you can stand in that place, you are now going to have a glorious experience of compensation and reward. Don't fret, don't give up, don't draw back. Stand through and stand through with confidence. You have the worst news in the world, but you're the most confident fellow walking. You're even more confident than those who don't have bad news. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Verses 36. He says, for you have need of steadfast patience and endurance. He says, in this journey to receive, you need that patience, which is of God and the endurance, which is of God. There's a difference between the worldly patience and the godly patience. The worldly patience is, let's wait and see. The godly patience Let's wait for the salvation of the Lord. It's going to come through. It could take two weeks, two days, depending on where you are. But it must come. He says, you need that patience and endurance so that you may perform and fully accomplish the will of God. And listen, thus receive and carry away and enjoy the full of what is promised. Do you see these things? Are you reading what I'm reading? He says that you will receive and carry away. You will receive and carry away and enjoy to the full what is promised. Oh, may you receive tonight and carry away and enjoy all that God has promised. Somebody shout hallelujah. I feel like screaming. Woo! Glory to God. Shout hallelujah. And he says in 37, for still a little while, a very little while, the coming one will come and it will not delay. But, he says, because of that, verse 38, he says, the just shall live by faith. That is why the just live by faith. We don't live by feelings. We don't live by the economy. We don't live by science. We don't live by biology. We don't live by social studies. We don't live by artificial intelligence. We don't live by historians. We don't live by philosophy. We don't live by education and our career. For all that the world reads and teaches was also taught and learned by men. We live by faith. If you stop living by faith, you will die in spite of all God has given you. Somebody shout amen. So he says, the just shall live by faith. My righteous servant shall live by his conviction. Respecting man's relationship to God and divine things and holy favor. Born of faith and conjoined with faith. Are you hearing me? That's how we live. That's how we live. Shout hallelujah. And if he draws back and shrinks in fear, my soul shall have no delight or pleasure in him. You see, he said, that's, that's the thing we're saying. Fearless confidence. Constantly. Never have, and I've seen this very many times, never have bouts of drawing back. You know, you have those people, when they're sick, today they're strong, they're confessing right, fearless confidence, Sunday sermon, apostle, you have preached. They've been going to send comments on YouTube, mm -mm, this is my sermon, it was mine, you're talking to me, you know. Sometimes I read some of those comments and I say, wow, you understand. And then something hits them on Tuesday. They had the sermon on Sunday. Tuesday, after tomorrow, <laughs> Oh, they drew back into fear. Okay, yes, I know I had the sermon, but I think I'm going to die. What, 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 what? So you're actually trying to tell God that, yeah, yeah, yeah I believe in you only when I'm feeling right and things are going the right way. Uh-uh. He says, even when you are going through whatever you're going through, the one mistake you will do is to draw back into fear. God, the Amplified says it right, to shrink to fear. Because fear shrinks you. Stay big. That is what he's saying. Stay enlarged in your spirit. Stay strong in the things of God. But he says, but some of you, the challenge is today, and there are people like that, today they are, oh, burning on all pistons. I believe God. I can't die. Everything is okay. Yay. Because they listen to someone in the morning, afternoon. What can I tell you? What can I tell you, Alice? You understand? 
And in the evening, oh, they are so strong. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Have you seen Martin? Martin is so strong. That guy, he can die. You see how he's walking? I... 8 p.m. If I die, my house in this place, give to my son Rogers. You understand? Today they are believing, tomorrow they are not. God is bored. He has no pleasure and delight. This is our faith. We cannot please God. But he has said in verse 39, he says, but our way is not that of those who draw back to eternal misery that is not our way somebody shout that's not my way shout that's not my way he says but our way is not that which draws back to eternal misery and perdition and are utterly destroyed but we are of those who believe who cleave to and trust in and rely on god through jesus christ the messiah and by faith and then we preserve our souls that means we stick onto it in luganda to the miracle we stick to the end. When you choose to fight, oh, okay, don't enter the fight if you're not ready. But when you do, the devil should know some of you. He should know that, you see, that woman doesn't fight. But if she fights, if she says that she's going to fight, she's going to get what she wants. Are you hearing me? The devil should be able to say that that guy doesn't fight always because, you know, he's a simple. But when he says that I'm going to fight, Whatever he chooses to fight for, we have to let go. Hell should have a record of you that when you fight, you win. Hell should have a record of you that you don't draw back. Hell should have a record of you that you cannot be broken. That is the way of the spirit. Paul, we know. Peter, we know. Apostle Grace, we know. Jesus, we know. Who are you? Choose to fight it out. If you're saying, oh, I have this disease and I think the doctor said I'll die. If you've made up your mind to die, make your will, we'll bury you. But if you say I'm not ready, oh, there's a man of God. They sent me a message. His family, this man had diabetes. And so he has a wonderful daughter and a son-in-law. These people love me so much. And the father got diabetes and then... It was bad, and then he started losing everything, and then they cut off his limbs, and then he bled and bled and bled. And then the doctor said, you know, where you're at now, sir, where this man is now, there's nothing, nothing, nothing that can reverse this, nothing. Couldn't talk. It, it was so bad. He said, now we just need to prepare him for death. They shifted him from a normal ward and took him in palliative care. Now, when they take somebody to palliative care, it means they've done everything they could. Now they just want to manage and give him a peaceful death. This guy is put on Zoom. It was one Saturday and we prayed for the man. Are you hearing me? But this is what I noticed about these guys. When they showed me the video of the man whom we were praying for, this man's mouth was speaking things. There was no way the devil would kill him. When you hear what the man was saying, there was no way the devil would kill him. He was speaking of his plans, his visions and dreams. Oh my goodness. I said, this is the right man to pray with. Are you hearing me? We joined our faith on Zoom and boom, the man kicked back to life. Somebody shout hallelujah. You don't draw back. When you choose to fight, it doesn't matter how bad the news is. Fight. Yeah. And last but not least, choose your associations wisely. Do you know that the people you associate with define and determine how much you receive? Not how much you're given. We're all believers and we're given. But you could hang around the wrong Christian. Choose your associations. Proverbs 13 verses 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Choose your companions. Choose your friends. Choose your associations. Associate with people who have received. Associate with people who have results. One man said, and it's true, there was a research that was done, and they said, that you are the average of the five people you hang around with. And that is true. Count your five friends. Count the five people you hang around with. You will see that you're the average of it. You're not so far from where they are. You're the average. You're the average. You're the average. Lot had nothing. Lot did not have a covenant with God. But he stuck with a man who had a covenant with God. And the Bible says, and as Abraham was prospering, Lot was prospered also. 
That's the power of association. Some people don't know how to associate. There are marriages right now that are destroyed because people associated with the wrong people. Some people were seated in a ministry studying the word and they got a wrong friend. This person dissuaded them into a ministry they did not belong and their destiny has been you know, reversed to 20 or 15 years back because they associated with the wrong person. You sat with the ungodly, in the counsel of the ungodly. You sat in the way of sinners. And things started going out of the will and purposes of God. You sat in the seat of the scorners, the blackmailers, the gossipers and the slanderers. And things are frustrated in your life because you related with the wrong people. I choose my friends. I choose my friends. I choose those that are in my circles. I choose those that I have fellowship with. There are people, I love them so much, but I can't sit down and talk with them. Not because I don't love them, but I know what they can do to me in my spirit. Relate with people with a positive spirit, with the energies that receive, with the vibrations that align to increase and multiplication, with people with the glory of manifestation. You'll be amazed when you relate with them, certain things will start opening up for you. Why? Because... There are silent instructions on their lives that somehow start to lead and command your spirit without knowing. And before you know that, you adjust to their idiosyncrasies, to their way of life and character. And some of those seeds which I work within them automatically start working within you. You might never even know what exactly changed in your life, but you'll start to see that certain things start to attach themselves to you because of the right associations. Some of you are not receiving because the people you're around with don't have the power to. Somebody shout hallelujah. It's like some of you, you notice when you join, for example, Fanero, you realize your finances went up. Even if you came from a poor family, many of you who are in Fanero, you're going to examine yourselves and realize that if not now, over the years, you're going to come first. Your families, financially. You're going to come first. You'll see it. When they're making opinions about people, you'll always come first. We will not make decisions except this one is here. They will start consulting you more than anybody. God will start placing you in places of authority. Why? Because God is pushing the ministry to that way. Every weekend we have people getting married. Why? Because it's on us. Even if you have a generational curse of 20 decades of people not getting married, when you come to Fanero, you'll be the first. Are you hearing me? Our women give birth. Our women give birth. I don't have anyone submitted to me right now, present, and their womb has felt open. I don't have anyone. Are you hearing me? Why? Because that's just the way. That's just the way. Associate with the right people. Open your mouth and thank God for the word. Thanks. Thanks. We give you thanks for all you've done. I am so blessed. My soul is at rest. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. Help me quiet. Thanks, 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 thanks for all. Father, we thank you for your word. We receive everything you've promised. Even those of you who have not seen the manifestation yet of some of these things that I've spoken, I believe that they are yours. And the end of the Lord says that you are so. And I refuse any testimony that has spoken otherwise on your life. Regardless of what's happening in your life, I believe that you're rich. I believe that you're strong. I believe that you're potent. I believe that you're wise. 
that you are an overcomer, that you increase, that you are above and not beneath. And that's your testimony. Now, every word that has been spoken tonight establishes you in receiving all that God has given you. And I'm waiting for testimonies. Give the Lord a mighty of praise. Come and clap your hands to Jesus. If you have never given your life to Christ, I want to give you this opportunity. The Bible says, for there is no name under the sun or heaven under which men are saved, save the name of Jesus. That's the name that was given. And so when you receive him as your Lord and Savior, everything in your life is going to change. Repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you shed your blood for my sins and was raised for my glory. Tonight, I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 41 466 4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest. <laughs>